an intriguing tone and a warm presence to every room he plays and every fan he greets. Roger Yeager on the Chris Top program next. Yeah, I'm on iHeartRadio and Spreaker.com. Oh, their stocks? Worthless. Down the toilet. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? My name is Dorcas Maximus, commander of the Dorks of the North, general of the Dork Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Dork Vader. And I will have my vengeance. Dorks of the world, unite! <laughs> Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either talk in the crystal program. I am the one and only Chris Broadcasting live from my lavish studio apartment. The busy are and the did did the was and that of that class back in my we didn't know about the world wide web was a whole different game Been played back when I was a kid Wanna get down in a cool way Picture yourself on a beautiful day Big bell bottoms and groove along here Just walking in style with a party full empty three You can listen to the music on the Chris Up Is the Chris Top program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from our lavish studio apartment here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. How in the hell are you doing, world? Speaking for the world, we're doing pretty good. And I forgot to say my saying. I was just going to say yeah. this up, but then I just went but on But you just went off on this tangent. Yep. That's you do how that. I roll. You're cuckoo. I'm glad. <laughs> I am so <laughs> glad that I'm cuckoo, because cause the world would be boring if I wasn't. So out of all the stuff we have going on the next 20 days or so, what are you most excited about? Uh, moving. <laughs> move? Yeah. Why the move? Like, what's... what's we're going to be in a new place. Yeah? Well, it's going to be a house. Yeah, we're going to have a house, and we're going to have space for everything, and I'm yeah. not going to feel like I'm so cramped. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to the studio. I mean, that's the main reason for me, just because I... You know, right now we have a studio slash living room slash dining room. Slash Abbey room. Yeah, slash a box for it behind us because we've been packing for a yep. couple of months. Yeah. So it'll be nice to have everything in the studio in its place. I'm so freaking excited yeah. to be able to have a laundry room in the house. <laughs> I'm so sick of the laundromat. And I will never, ever forget how much the laundromat sucks. Yeah. I'm never going to forget yeah, that. Yeah, never so going to forget it, huh? When somebody tells me that they're going to the laundromat, I will give them a hug. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to be able to do live interviews now from, from the studio. That's going to be boss. That's going to be so much fun. And we'll have, like, we'll take pictures, we'll video the whole thing. It, it'll be a, a good experience, I think, mm -hmm. for everybody. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, at first, it was just the studio I was excited for, but now I'm kind of equally excited for everything. About everything. And we've got... There's not one thing that I'm more excited more than the other. And we've got Riverfest coming up, too. Yeah. And that's going to be exciting. That's going to be super exciting. We're going to interview, like, 13 artists and then have a, a big deal at the end of it. I'm excited to do the monologue. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> well, have you picked out what you're going to do yet? Yeah, I'm going to do um, Harvey. Are you? Yeah. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> I could do Harvey. I could spit Harvey out right now. Do it. One night, several years ago, I was walking down Fairfax Street. Between 8th and 9th, I'd just helped Ed Hickey into a taxi cab. Ed had been mixing his rye and his gin, and I felt that he needed Convey. And so I, as I started to walk away, I heard this voice say, Good evening, Mr. Dowd. I turned around, and there was this big white rabbit leaning up against a lamppost. Well... I thought nothing of it, because when you've lived in a town as long as I have, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. 
And I could go on, but it's not about me today. <laughs> Are you impressed? I was impressed. I was like getting into the world. <laughs> and then you took me out of that fantasy world. <laughs> Sorry. And now I'm angry. Well, it's about Roger today. So we, we're going to be back with Roger Yeager here in just a minute. The, the neutral, neutral bruh. Bruh. The excited bruh. 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 The melancholy bruh. Bruh. The bronchitis bruh. <laughs> The devastated bruh. Bruh. Overly happy bruh. 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 The creepy bruh. Bruh. The douchebag bruh. Bruh. The stubborn bruh. Bruh. The intense bruh. Bruh. The irritated bruh. Bruh. The annoying bruh. 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 The complex bruh. Bruh. The stupid bruh. Bruh. The dignified bruh. Bruh. The confused bruh. Bruh. The curious bruh. Bruh. The mysterious bruh. Bruh. The boring bruh. Bruh. The tired bruh. Bruh. The high bruh. <coughs> bruh. The redneck bruh. Bruh, boy. The urban bruh. Yo, what's up, bruh? The homosexual bruh. Bruh. The want you to go away bruh. Uh, bruh, Felicia. The Antonio Banderas bruh. <clears throat> I want to kiss you, bruh. The frightened, bruh. Bruh. The sheep, bruh. Bruh. Ah, ah, ah. The constipated, bruh. Mm, bruh. The relieved, bruh. Uh, bruh. The sick, bruh. Bruh. The bruh only a dog can hear. The evil, bruh. <laughs> bruh. The Novocaine, bruh. Bruh. The falling, bruh. Bruh! The after sex, bruh. Bruh. Not to be confused with the I love banana splits, bruh. Bruh. The psychotic, bruh. <laughs> bruh. The frightened, bruh. <gasps> bruh. The cyborg, bruh. Bruh. The underwater, bruh. <laughs> the spoiled brat, bruh. Bruh. One syllable, bruh, greeting. Bruh. Two syllable. Sup, bruh. Three syllable. Howdy, bruh. Four syllable. What's up, my bruh? Farewell, bruh. One syllable. Bruh. Two syllable. Peace, bruh. Three syllable. Deuces, bruh. And four syllable. I'm out, my bruh. This has been a Chris Top production. <laughs> you can either talk in the Chris Top You are absolutely, positively, 100% for sure in the right place. This is the Chris Top program. Faux shizzle, you faux shizzle, are in the faux shizzle right. Faux Did you practice place. that? Kinda, what does that even mean? I kind of just made that up. What does that even mean? I don't know. I don't know either. Sometimes I don't know what I mean when I speak. Tegan says she's listening poolside because it's hot outside. Whoa. I'm a little jealous. I wish we could broadcast from the pool, but we might get electrocuted. That, that would, would be, be the downside. I'm not doing that. Yeah. So we got Roger Yeager on the show today. Roger, how are you, buddy? Hey, doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing good. You know, I got to admit, I mean, I, once I started talking to you, I felt better, but I'm a little intimidated just what? because, well, just because you've done so many cool things. Okay. And and I, I, don't, I don't know. I, it's just a little intimidating for you. You just seem like a really cool guy. Well, um, thanks. I don't know. I, I might have a just a tiny man crush. Um, on Chris. You. But okay, now you got to tell me what's your recipe? What's your recipe for chai? My recipe for chai. So I like to use goat's milk, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I do it on the stove, and I get some loose tea leaf, and just I boil it in the milk, and then I might add some spices. Yeah. And uh, then once it has boiled, I let it simmer for a little bit, and then pour it into a cup and add some honey, stir it, and it's good to go. How cool is that? I mean, it's, okay, it's we, have, we have a question. Yeah. Right. What is chai? Chai. So chai is the Indian word for tea. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Like you, you can go to Panera and get like a chai tea. So was I just drinking right. chai, or was I? Is that like applied to all tea, or just specific types of tea? Well, well so. Uh, here, here it, for us, it means like a like an Indian style tea. So usually that's like. Um, it's tea with some spices in it, and it, it tastes a little more Indian. But but in India, they call every tea chai. Yeah, I like it um, warmed up. I don't really like it cold. Um, I've had it yeah. both ways. Yeah, I'm but I like it. I like it hot. Yeah. Agreed. Mm. I was <laughs> so, about to like bust out into song. I just had nothing. 
so, so I mean, when you do you do you cook too? I mean, aside from making chai tea, do you do you like cook Indian foods and stuff too? Um, I do cook. It's I, I used to try to cook Indian food, but I wasn't very good at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, to get really good at it, it, it takes hours. So. Indian food's like really hot and spicy. Yeah, so uh, that was my next. So yeah. is all your food like spicy because of that, or, or not what? all of it? But yeah. I, I do, I do like some flavor. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Now, see, see. Okay. Now, if we're gonna hang out on a regular basis, we we, we gotta like kind of lay low with the hot stuff. No, man, I love hot stuff. <laughs> we can hang out, but Chris has to go home. What so makes what my eyes? What you're water. saying is, I need like two two separate dishes for both. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just it. just when you're ready to invite us over for dinner, that's fine. All right. Uh, all right. Now, now you had a really interesting time uh, when you were in India. I've got to ask this: like, how did that change your life? Because I mean, you you went through some pretty life changing things while you were there. Right. Uh, so you you probably came out a different person altogether. So tell us a little bit about your story there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, so prior to living in India, I, I grew up in Oklahoma, um, very very much in kind of a primarily white suburb. Um, like I, I had friends of other races and that, and that kind of stuff as well, but um, I had never you know lived in a culture that wasn't the U.S. that mm-hmm. wasn't Oklahoma or Tennessee. And uh, so being over there and seeing seeing the way that that people did things very differently um, definitely changed some things in my own life that that I like to do. Yeah, and I'm sure it had just a, a major influence on your music. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, and you picked up a different instrument there. How do you say that? What? Sitar. A sitara. Sitar. 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 So yeah. so what's the? It sounds like a video game. <laughs> like a character in a video game. So, so what's the difference in, in between that and, and just a guitar? Um, so, so a guitar, like you, you're kind of more focused on chords and different keys and um, and harmony and that kind of thing. And so you're you're playing six notes at the same time and you're you're doing music in that way. But uh, with sitar, you're playing really just kind of one note. And then it's really the Indian music is more about melody and rhythm than it is harmony mm-hmm. now do you use the sitar and and most of the stuff that you produce i wouldn't not not most um i've i've kind of been in on a journey of of writing songs that that use sitar more and uh-huh. so um and i'm tra- i'm making a transition into doing that more but it's it's not it's not i don't want to sit on on stage for a concert and play mm-hmm. sitar on every song i like to i like to mix it up yeah still well it's cool though it's 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 different uh, and I, yeah. I think that's I think that's neat, and it's cool that you can bring some of the culture back with you. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, you, you don't, you're never gonna forget it. No, no, never will. I, I still go back. I go back every year or so. Now, what is it you do? What's your reason for going back? I get I get invited to like teach songwriting in some schools, and and uh, so and I'm I've got some great friends there now that will be lifelong friends to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I get to go and, and create music with them, and um, it's just something that – it's just a part of my life now. It's like it's like going to Colorado for vacation or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, you became – was it your first year that you, you became ill? Yes, yeah. All right, so tell me about what happened there. Um, well, I had – I'd been under just a lot of stress, like kind of, kind of was confused about a lot of life direction, that that kind of stuff. Um, and then in the middle of that, I had been getting sick a lot, so I'd pick up a parasite and um, get diarrhea, and then have to take some antibiotics, and and I so I was doing doing that to my body over and over again. Mm-hmm. The problem was when when you take antibiotics, it kills all of the good bacteria in your intestines as well. Mm-hmm. That actually help you digest, uh, and I didn't. I didn't really know anything about that, and so, um, so I took antibiotics over and over again, which was taking a, t- a toll on my immune system, and then add to that the stress that I was in, and my body just kind of gave out. Mm-hmm. So that was a, a ch- did it, it probably made you not want to go back for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, I, re- yeah. I definitely. Definitely had a tough time mm-hmm. <laughs> with sure. uh, with wanting to go back for sure. Sure. Uh, okay. Now I I want to get into your music. 
I listen to your music, and it is. It's it's very thought provoking, and it it, it it almost puts me in a zen type place when I listen to it. That's always good. Yeah, and I don't go there very often, so it's nice to have that escape because we all get so caught up uh, in our lives and and getting stressed out, and a lot of times it's over just little stupid things, and and and. It takes the right song, I think, sometimes three minutes to just turn your day around. Mm-hmm. And and I can find that in your music and, and, and all three of the songs that you gave me. Um, so, I mean, awesome. yeah, you gave me a little bit more than a song. I mean, you gave me like a little escape. I need um, to listen to these songs every day. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to start, um, and I put these in order of my, my favorite or, or uh, from my least favorite to my favorite. Now, I like them all. Don't take it the wrong okay. way. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saving my favorite for the last. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to make you wait. i see what you chose. <laughs> now, the first one that we, we're going to play, it's called Where the Roads Meet. Okay. Uh, now, did you write all these? I did, yeah. All right, so tell me where this one came from. Uh, so that one I actually wrote in India. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. I was on kind of a kind of a songwriting retreat. And so I, I went. I went with like 15 Indian musicians to this this little tiny town in, the, in a, the state called Gujarat. And uh, and I we we kind of went out two by two into the streets on on a, on a few different days. And um, I sat I sat with my friend on this day, and and we just kind of watched people walking around at an intersection. And uh, just you know, people going about their day, going where they had to go. Like, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to work or on their way delivering things, that kind of thing. So we had a we had a conversation about just the busyness of life and how easy it is to just get caught up in the things that we have to do, and to never like stop and really ask more important questions. And so uh, that's, that's that song was really born out of just that conversation. Well, I guess songs can just come from anywhere. Yeah. yeah, you just have to have your ears open, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All so right. that song was cool because that was that was the first time I actually wrote a song and then applied sitar to it. I said, okay, mm-hmm. let's let's make this Indian-ish. Let's do this. <laughs> so, yeah. So All it was, right. It was fun for me. So this is uh, called "Where the Roads Meet." Roger Yeager, right here on the Chris Top Program. Awesome. At the place where the roads meet Surrounded by midnight No moon, no stars to light my way home I meet friends and strangers Moving and moving But they're not really sure which street they roam And once in a while We all try to figure it out And once in a while We look for a way out And once in a while We long for better days At the place where the roads meet There is commotion Blaring horns, dust in the air Hundreds of faces Stuck in their moments With hardened eyes looking everywhere And once in a while We all try to figure it out And once in a while We look for a way out And once in a while We long for better days And once in a while We all try to figure it out And once in a while We look for a way out and once in a while We long for better days And if we're not asking now Then tell me when We could hold it in somehow Or we could just be there
ask it now And tell me when We could hold it in somehow We could just begin So come on, let it out And we will see If anyone is listening Oh, the play Where the roads meet You know, I gotta say, I'm quite honored to be playing this music on our show. I mean, this is good stuff. This music is like, ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> I love the sitar too, and I, I could definitely awesome. pick it out um, in there. So it's, I loved it's, it. I was like kind of zoning out. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's it's cool. I, I zone just, out like all the time, so I need good music to zone out. I just kind of want to chill now and just talk about you know. Yeah, I do too. I want to talk about like chill stuff. Like. Chill stuff. Drink oh. some chai yeah. and talk chill. Yeah. <laughs> Drink some chill <laughs> chai and happen. talk chill. <laughs> Chilling. Uh, so okay, so now you you are actually in the middle of, or you're about to start recording, yeah. right? So so what's what's the new? Is it going to be a whole EP or just singles or what? This it's going to be a uh, whole on a full on new album. Like, wow! So it's a big project. Songs is what we're looking at right now. That's a huge project. Yeah. Uh, now you've got a Kickstarter going on too to kind of help out with that. I do. All right. Yeah. So if somebody wants to throw some throw some cash your way to help you out, how do they do that? You can jump on Kickstarter, search Roger Yeager, start over, mm -hmm. and that that should send you to it. Or you can also jump on one of my like my Facebook page or my my Instagram, and and they'll uh, there should be links on there for it as well. Okay, and then you have a website too, right? I do. Okay, and the website will link them to everything, like your Twitter and and I guess your your other stuff too. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. and what's your website? Roger Yeager Music. Com. Okay, and that's J A E G E R. Um, yeah, and just yep. so they can they can go there. And we're Twitter buddies for life, right? That's right. See, that's sweet. It so sweet. you need to tweet me from India sometime. Okay. Tweeting live from India. I'd be really like take a selfie and tweet it to me from India. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, this is my friend Roger in India. Yeah. You get like a good shot of the of the street full of like two thousand people. <laughs> that would be cool. I'm like so excited that I'm fist bumping <laughs> myself right now. <here. laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's exciting. So, can you give me like a little hint uh, what the new uh, what the new album is going to entail? Like, what what type of music? Yeah, so uh, we there, there will be more sitar. So we've uh, we've already recorded the first track, which is the title track, and it's it's actually called Start Over, um, and it's it's got even a little bit more of an Indian feel than than the last song you just heard did. Um, but there'll be there'll be some good like rocking songs in there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll all be full bands. There may, there may be one acoustic song on it, so there, it'll be a, it'll be a combination of of like kind of slow and meditative, and and mm -hmm. uh, and then some some fast songs too. How would I'm you excited. how would you classify your music? Like what what genre would you say it is? Yeah, you know that's that's a tough one. I I usually just tell people pop rock because because you know that the industry kind of has that expectation. Like where what box do I need to, to mm -hmm. put you in? Um, and so that I feel like that kind of encompasses a lot, a lot of what I do. But I, when I perform live, like I, I perform live solo a lot, so I'm just playing my yeah. acoustic guitar. And uh, when you play slow songs on acoustic guitar, it sounds like folk music. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I like. You need music. to come up with your own genre. Like you maybe, think so? Yeah, maybe like chill pop. Chill, chill pop. pop. Chill pop. Something like that. Or pop like, chill. Yeah. You pop do, chill. I, I kind of like chill pop. I don't know. Okay. We can talk. Right. We'll talk we, about we can it. Talk. I'll have my people get in touch with you, Roger, and we can make something happen for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and we've got two other songs we're going to play, but first I have I have a question, um, yeah. and this is a little off the wall. Because this is stuff that people, you know, they can go to your website and read your biography and find out, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I want to know, and this is a pretty important question, if, okay. you, if you could have any superhero power, what would it be? Ooh, you just dropped the bomb. I dropped the bomb. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Any of them, huh? Any superhero power? What would you Any, choose? You know, I I'd, I'd want to say like teleportation mm -hmm. would be sweet. Mm -hmm. That especially for you because like you know India, no problem. I can be there right, right. now. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just see see you right now, guys. See you, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and then you can still be home in Tennessee for dinner. That's <laughs> right. That's it. Right. Yeah. Exactly it. Now, okay, if if somebody wants to uh, wants to catch you live, like how how do they know where to find you? Uh, do you have a schedule on your website? Um, I've got a, right now. I'm really running that more from Reverb Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, what, the website is is under under construction, and some some of that's being figured out at the moment. But yeah, the Reverb Nation has my has my more consistent schedule. Okay. Do you have anything coming up in the next week or two? Um, honestly, no, because we are we're entering the studio starting Sunday, mm-hmm. and I will be I will be working pretty full on for the next next three weeks or so. Yeah, so that's that. going to definitely keep yeah. you busy, and and you're going to have to I guess save your focus for that. Uh, yeah, where are some of the places you typically play when you when you are doing that? Well, so I I part of what I do at the moment is I, I play downtown in Nashville in a cover duo. So we we play at a lot of different places. Um, a couple in particular are Bailey's and a place called the Stillery. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've done like I've I've played in other venues here in Nashville. Like I've, I've played in the basement and I've played at uh, the Rutledge. Played at played at I got to play sitar for someone at the High Watt. Oh, that's a couple cool. weeks ago, which was fun. Yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, and then I do random, do random shows. Like I'm, I played in Tulsa a few weeks ago at at our uh, our center of the universe festival. I played at a place called Masons while I was there. So mm-hmm. it, just you know, different spots. Yeah. Now, if you if you had a, a choice, like for a dream stage, like what would that stage be? Oh gosh, the dream stage. Like anywhere in the world. Hmm. You know what would be awesome is Red Rocks. Red Rock. Why Red Rocks? It just it looks cool. <laughs> I've I've never been there, but yeah. <laughs> uh, you know you see the photos and it's just it's just gorgeous. Now if the Grand Ole Opry called you up and said, "Hey Roger, we want you to do um you know a couple of songs here," would you turn them down or? No, I'd probably do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ryan. I was going to say something dumb, but then I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I don't have that little little switch in my mind. I just usually say dumb stuff. You do. I, I wish I had that. <laughs> I I, uh, I usually no I'm, filter. I'm a guy that thinks before I say most things. Yeah, so. I, I have a tough time with that one. I, I sit there and I th- I I try. <laughs> I sit there and I think about something for months before I even say it. Now, yeah. for months. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm Sometimes. Like. <laughs> so okay. So so the next song I'm gonna play. And, and I sort of teetered back and forth. I wasn't sure if I wanted to play this one next or last, but I went ahead and settled on Rescue. Um, so where did Rescue come from? Hello? Are you still there? Can you hear I us? I think he may have muted us. Oh, no. Or maybe he doesn't want to talk anymore. Or maybe he's fighting, you know, <laughs> evil wizards at the moment. He could be. Because I know be. that that's a difficult... A difficult I'm gonna, I want to hang up on Roger, and oh, we're going to call him back. Bro, you just hung up on our I guest. did. I did. I do that sometimes. <laughs> no, he's not picking sometimes up. Sometimes it, it just What did does you that. say to him? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go <laughs> ahead and start good. playing Rescue, and then uh, we'll try to get him back on Boom. while we're playing it. Uh, but this is Rescue, Roger Yeager on the Chris Top Program. up inside let all the lies get to me those hateful words that bruised me but i just wanted them out of my head i needed a rescue
It's like it's like radio. I love the production. It's just radio ready. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why I don't. Yeah. I can't just turn on the radio and just hear it. I got a question. Okay. Who is this rescue you speak of? Who is who is this rescue? Yes. Who is your rescue? Well, yeah, I think for me it was from more from a, a faith perspective. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it was a fun song. It was uh, it was something I I sat down with a friend who at the time was was in a like a kind of a Christian rock band and he said, Hey, let's write a song for, for my band. So that's, that's what we did. And then his band broke up and, uh, then I still had the song. I was like, you know what? I, I like this. I think I'm just gonna, I'm going to take it for me. Mm-hmm. Just go with it. Yeah. I like yeah. it a lot. It works. It does. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, you might want to take a deep breath cause I have a really heavy question. It's going to be really? heavy up yeah. in here. Yeah, so making me nervous. You know, don't get nervous. Okay. Oh, not not too nervous. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> so a little nervous. If you if you had a chance to sit down and have a cup of chai with anybody, and this could be anybody living, dead, anybody throughout history, who would this person be? Hmm. Um. I. Are we talking like musical heroes, or just any? You're saying anybody? Whatever you want it to be. It's, it's totally up to you. Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, I, you know what I think it would be awesome to sit down with Chris Martin from Coldplay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, just because they're they're one of my they're one of my favorite bands. I like that uh, band too. I think I would I think I would love to just hear his story. Like, what? How did how did where did it start for you? What are some things that that happened that you wish had gone differently? What are some things you felt like went right for you? Um, you know that kind of stuff. That'd how cool awesome. would it be to open for Coldplay? That would be amazing. Dude. So would you yeah. turn into a fanboy? Ah. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. <laughs> do you ever I think, a... you know what happened when I when I see famous people, mm-hmm. I think I, I tend to I tend to give them space. I'm like, oh I don't I don't want to be that guy that that uh that yeah. rushes them and it's, makes them it's hard. It's it's difficult to fight that back though, because you, you don't want to yeah. miss that opportunity, but then you want to just be cool with it. Mm-hmm. Right. You're like, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. Ah! Yeah, see, I, I kind of learned my lesson. I was at the airport one time, and um, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith just, just comes right out. And, oh, wow. And I'm sitting there debating in my mind whether or not I'm going to say anything. So I, I walked up to him, and he's very recognizable. I mean, he looks the same in person as, as he does on TV anytime. Uh, right. Just getting off a plane, you can just definitely tell. And, and, of course, he had Aerosmith with him, so it wasn't hard. So, <laughs> so I went up to him, and I said, Man, Stephen, I really love your music. I saw you in concert in Nashville two years ago, and I reached out to shake his hand, and he gave me five, and he stuck his tongue out and walked off. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was cool, and I'm glad I seized the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. You got a high five and a tongue sticking out. Yeah. So that's yeah. Good. So I mean, I you know, I've got memories that story. you'll never forget. I've got that story, and I'm sure Stephen remembers me. I call him every week, but he doesn't return my calls. No, but I'm you sure he don't. Will. You stalker. I'm... <laughs> That's a stalker. You don't sure. do that. You're I'm not sure a stalker. Eventually. He's just getting around to it. Persistence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I'm not a stalker. I'm just persistent. So, okay. So we talked about your website. and it, It's uh, rogeryeagermusic.com. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they can go there and they can get links to your to your Twitter, your Reverb Nation, where you've got, uh, like, if you're going to be playing live, they can find that information there. But now the, the studio recording that you're doing, you said this weekend. Yeah. Um, now, where's that at? So we are we're actually taking our first three studio days at RCA Studio A and mm-hmm. on Music Row. So that's a pretty big deal. 
Yeah. Yeah, they know what they're doing there. Mm-hmm. That they that they do. <laughs> so the three days that you're there, what are you trying to get accomplished? So I I, I think what we're looking at is kind of taking those first three days to to do like more of a live recording situation. Mm-hmm. So we we're still talking about which of the songs we are going to use for that. Um, but so I I think it's going to be like a a big like kickoff for us, a big creative push. Um, to see sort of what direction this this album's going to take because a lot of it a lot of it we still don't know a lot of it is up in the air yeah i guess you i guess you you sort of get a feeling when you get in the studio and you get started then you you, you have a better understanding i guess what direction it's going to go in yeah yeah see i don't understand yeah. how this stuff works i'm uh, really no, not i don't it. either yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just do it <laughs> just well, you know as it. long as you're having fun um do you, what is your definition of success? I mean, do you feel like you've already made it, or do you feel like you still have a long way to go? Um, I, you know, I would say both. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's easy to kind of get stuck in this place of like, oh, but I'm, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, and and to be feel like un, unfulfilled in that. But I, I think I've been in a process of learning to just appreciate where I am. Um, and you know what? I was I was watching I was watching The Office. I, I went through and rewatched the whole thing. Dude, dude, you love The Office. Too. Uh, maybe I love like the a office. month ago, I watched the final episode, mm-hmm. and uh, Andy Bernard is on, and he's, he has this quote where he says, um, "You know, I I wish there were a way to know yep. when you're living in the good old days." Yep. And I, uh, that was a great quote. I, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I need to. I'm I'm living in the good old days right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and people uh, don't someday I'll look back that. and go, yeah, I remember all those weekends I was playing on Broadway and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you for you, whether you believe it or not, as you get older, you forget the crappy stuff and you just remember the good stuff. Right. And you know, and a lot of people are living in the good old days and they don't realize it. Yeah, yeah. and it's uh, it's 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 really interesting. Um, yeah. to think about that. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that you love The Office. <laughs> yeah, he brought that up, and then I knew exactly what quote he was talking <laughs> like, about as soon as he yeah, started. Yeah. Maybe you could actually um, hook up with Andy and write that song. That'd be great. Yeah, you could just yeah, do a little hook duet with, with him. Hook up with Andy. Yeah. Like, that's his real name. <laughs> well, Ed Helms. Ed yeah, Helms. I'll always call him Andy. You know. <laughs> Have you seen Vacation? Did you watch that movie? Have you seen no, that I never did. Um, oh, man. Wait, is that it just came out? It's the new movie with, uh, with Andy in it. With Andy oh, Bernard, yeah, yeah. starring yeah. Andy Bernard. <laughs> Right. Chevy Chase, right? He's yeah, Chevy Chase makes a cameo uh, awesome. in it, but it's funny. I was laughing out loud um, throughout the whole thing. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked. I'll have to um, check it out. Okay, so so we've got one last song, and this one's actually my favorite, and uh, it's called "Not the Same." Uh, so tell me about this one. So that one, I wrote that a few years ago, and I, I think I think I was just looking back at not necessarily any one relationship in particular, but a few different ones where um, maybe that relationship had been broken for whatever reason. Um, mm-hmm. And the the approach of the song was was like, what if what if I ran into this person that I no longer talked to that things didn't end well with? And what if I could, you know, show them the things that, that I had learned, and then say to them essentially, like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I'm not like I was. Um, I've I've grown and I've learned, and and I wish you well." So that that's mm-hmm. sort of what the song's about. So it's it's just, um, w- is it like a give me a second chance song, or is it just, you know, I want you to know that I've, is it like, or is it more like I'm sorry for the way I was, but this is how I am now? Yeah, it's, it's essentially. Yeah, essentially yeah. I'm sorry. That's and everybody can relate to that too. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody said that they're sorry or, you know, felt mm-hmm. bad. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and this one's called Not the Same, Roger Yeager on the Chris Top Program. All right. Chairs that I swear I sat in yesterday, but the magic's faded without you here. The smiles are the kind that I just might forget. I wish I'd known by now. I wish I. I swear I'm not the same 
then what i know now that's kind of what that song says to me um yeah yeah what a great message yeah I, I do that a lot i think back and i mean man i wish i had the knowledge you know that that i have now back then and that's things could have been so much better but but at least we learn mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely yeah what are you gonna do right 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 how about how about uh zen rock zen rock, Z zen rock? yeah because i think you're more rock than pop but it's like Can we put chill in there too zen chill chill rock Zen chill rock, chill rock. or chill, chill rock zen. zen. I don't know. Zen's kind of cool. Rock chill zen. It's nice to have a z in it because you don't get to use z's very much. Yeah, but I like That's the true. word chill as well. So we need to work all three words into <laughs> Maybe. this. Maybe, maybe just ideas. We're just throwing, you know, we're just throwing around ideas. Yes. Yeah, trying to wow. seem cool. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> uh, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show, and I, I'm 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 really honored just to get to know you because I mean some of the stuff that you've done and some of the stuff that I know you're going to do, it's it's going to be pretty cool, I think. And and I'm excited to see what you're gonna come out with when you leave the studio. Um, and when do you think the new album's gonna come out? The the rough release date is kind of around the end of October, beginning of November. Okay, so um, if you want, you can like just sneak me some stuff, and I promise I won't play it. I just want to hear it. Want to hear it? Got yeah. it. Yeah. So we're in All the right. I'm in the loop, right? You're in the loop. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And we'll come over for some chai, too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah, I was over at Roger Yeager's house drinking some chai <laughs> the other day, you know, just chilling. Just chilling. Yeah, he goes to India just, all the time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just listening to, the, listening to the record before it's out. Right, it's, right, right, yeah. right. That's, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, the lifestyle I like to perceive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much. And, hey, next year... Uh, we're going to be uh, in Nashville at the uh, the CMA Fest at BB Kings. No way. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and we, this will be our third year there doing that, and I would love to see you there. So I'll probably get in touch with you about that. I am down. So, yeah, if you're, if you're not in India in June, then we'll, we'll try to make it happen. Okay. All Sounds right? Sounds great. Cool. Uh, well, I had a good time. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, RogerJaegerMusic.com. Make sure you go there. Throw this guy some support. 
uh, make sure you buy his music. Uh, because if you don't buy it, then we're not going to have a chance to hear the new stuff coming out. Do you want to do it? Steal your... it, and I'll hunt you down. Yeah, she will too. <laughs> don't steal it. I mean, it's easy to steal, but I mean, if you like Roger's music, you know, you want to support him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so until we broadcast again, are you want to take us out this time? I did it last Heck time. Yeah, I want right, to take ahead. us out. Go ahead. Until we broadcast again, please remember this: life is good, and we're gone. <laughs> Things might be looking grim I guess it's time